All right, welcome to Dual Redundancy, the only podcast where you can hear all the latest in movies, television, and pop culture moments from the past year from Too Many Hosts with exactly the same opinions. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is... Yeah, and Brian, the third one is... Kyle Bridger. I'm going to start this uh, this podcast off on a, on a weird note, but this is not anywhere entertainment related, but I would say that I am the original COVID-19 to John's <laughs> no. Delta variant to Dave's Omicron variant. It's a pandemic <sighs> year, baby. It's a pandemic year, trilogy, decade. <laughs> Who knows how long we're stuck in this, but okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that does relate to all the stuff we're talking about because that definitely has affected movies, television, and pop culture from the past year. And it's going to for many, many years. But tonight is a very special episode of Dora Dunnancy. We do it every year. It's been a tradition since uh, 2013, I believe. We're going to talk about your favorite movies, television shows, and pop culture moments from the past year. Uh, every year, we have this Google Form survey. Uh, we, you know, we get your votes from the listener, some help from the sample size movie and television subreddits, and we compile a list of the results and then we reveal them live tonight. So we got a good sample. Uh, we start off, I, I put in like 20, 30 movies and TV shows in each category, you know, oh, these are crowd hits. These are critic favorites. And then there's always a write in. So people can always write in as mm -hmm. well, just to get a good mix of what happened the past year and then we reveal it all here on the podcast we react and that's it that's how we close out 2021 mm -hmm. i don't know I'm, I'm ready to go right to it no in and out points this week you guys ready to start off let's let's talk let's movies do it. Let's do it. all right just to set the stage with movies uh the past few years 2018 the winner was avengers infinity war 2019 avengers endgame <laughs> Last year was actually Palm Springs. There wasn't any superhero <laughs> movies that came out. Uh, but let's start off with honorable mentions. These are I'll do a couple. The ones that are like in fourth place that just missed the cut. This, these missed it by just a couple of votes. Mm -hmm. Some animated films to start. Luca and the uh, the Mitchells versus the Machines. Um, Interesting. They just missed the cut. Okay. I, I actually really like these two. Uh, these are some of my... We'll get to our favorites, our personal favorites later. I like these two animated films. You can't go wrong with Pixar. You can't go wrong with a, a film from the Spider-Verse Lego movie team. Um, both of these were, were fun um, surprises. Uh, any thoughts on, on these two? Did you see any of these films? I, I believe you saw Luca. I did. Kyle. I did like Luca. And uh, the the um, kind of the... The tangentialness, I guess, is a word with uh, "Call Me by Your Name" is oh, yeah. it's crazy. It's kind of strange, strange how uh, close it mixes in with each other. But um, yeah, I liked Luca a lot. I mean, I don't think it's Pixar's best. Um, yeah, but it's. I mean, it's hard. It's hard yeah, to clear but, that bar. Um, that's for sure. But it's definitely enjoyable and a and a good uh, good movie. I got to be honest. I didn't even know the Mitchells versus the Machine. Where did that come from? It's on Netflix, baby. Oh boy, I had no... yeah. Check check that out. It was actually I actually really enjoyed it. It was it was fun. Um, it definitely has that unique animation style that, that you saw in like Spider Verse okay. and Lego Movie cool. and and stuff like that. Yeah, because I'm looking uh, at good even family at the film. clip art and I'm like, I don't even know what. That's insane. Like I gotta. I guess I gotta. I don't know. Get on it. Yeah. All right. So let's get to our top three here. Uh, let's see. Number three on the list, the Suicide Squad wow. 2021, that version of the list here. Wow. Uh, not, not the other one. Okay. Thoughts. Interesting. Thoughts on this choice for number three. Um, I gotta be honest. I don't even remember, remember if I watched this one or not. I think, I believe I did. <laughs> we did yeah, for the podcast. I believe we did, it was only yeah. a couple months so, ago. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's fine. I remember yeah. liking it better than the original, if I remember correctly. Um, Definitely. But the fact that I can't remember it makes it so forgettable to me that, you know, why why do it again? You know? <laughs> yeah. You know? I, I'm with you. I it was just a few months ago we talked about it, and I can't really remember anything really from it. Uh, we talked about it in episode three, uh, 351, 
and we even talked about like the lackluster box office, mm-hmm. the low HBO Max numbers, the whole brand confusion because this is the 2021 yeah. version and not the the other version, even though a lot of the characters are the same and the titles practically the same. And we're just like, well, I guess it w- didn't really click, but clearly it clicked. It's number three on yeah. the list, and it's definitely a step up from the other version, mm-hmm. the first version. We got James Gunn here at the helm. Definitely more fun. Has that kind of Guardians of the Galaxy mm-hmm. feel with the music and the style and the humor. Uh, John, any thoughts of the Suicide Squad? Mm. Yeah, I kind of agree with what we've been saying. Uh, I don't know why it was made after the first one, except I guess they did a better job, so that's it. But yeah, too much confusion with the first one. And I don't think there was anything in it that really made me go, wow. You know, just kind of like, all right, action movie. Poke it up, man. Okay. <laughs> the weird starfish thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh All yeah, right. that was that. The starfish. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, the most absurd. Yeah, I do remember this wild. Yeah, but there was like rats running <sighs> around and that was her power or something. Yeah. Rat girl, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um All right, we got we got two other films on the list. I forgot to ask this before I reveal number 3. Any thoughts, any possibilities that you think are going to be in the top 2 All now? Right. So uh, I, for movies of the year, I think Dune is probably one of them, and I'm going to guess. Uh, yeah, I would guess Dune or or one one of those Marvel mm. Marvel ones. You're 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 pretty much there, Kyle. Finger is on the pulse. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't remember Number Suicide two. Squad, but my finger is definitely on the pulse. <laughs> yeah. Number two on the list is a Marvel film, Shang Chi and the Leg- Legacy of the Ten Rings. I think, or maybe it's The Legend of the Ten Rings. Let me double check that. It's Legend. Uh, Legend of the Ten Rings. That just shows we're not Marvel yeah. fans here <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah. I don't even know the title of the movie I wrote down. Um, yeah, so none of us saw this film, which isn't great. Uh, people voted on it, and it's number two. So we need to have some kind of review. So earlier today, I reached out to a Marvel expert. Our friends, <laughs> The Good, The Bad, and The Watchable. I got Nick Rojas. On the line, Nick, what do you thought? What's up, everybody? This is Nick Rojas from The Good, The Bad, and The Watchable. I'm here to talk about Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. So I saw this movie in theaters a few months ago with my girlfriend. I'm a pretty big Marvel fan, I'd like to think. I, I've seen all the movies. I've even read some graphic novels over the last few years. I listen to a bunch of podcasts as well. So my girlfriend, she's a pretty big fan as well. She'll she'll tag along with me to all the big ones. So We sat there in the movie, and I was having a blast the first two-thirds of the movie. And that's obviously a much more grounded part of the movie. I mean, as grounded as a Marvel movie can be. I really loved the chemistry between Simu Liu and Aquafina. And and, and Simu Liu, who I I don't watch Kim's Convenience, but I know he's on that. He really popped out on the screen for me. I was like, this is a leading man right here. I really enjoyed his performance. And Aquafina was great in her own right as well. And I always love Aquafina. So I really liked the first two-thirds of this movie. And the last third became a lot of CGI, Just and I checked out. I even nodded off and fell asleep a little bit. But overall, I gave it a 6 out of 10. Uh, sorry, a 7 out of 10, because uh, I did enjoy this movie a lot, and I like the future. Uh, I'd like to see where this character goes in the future. My girlfriend liked it even more than I did, which I, I thought was interesting. She loved that movie a lot. I think she gave it close to an 8, and uh, she really enjoyed it. So Shang-Chi, a surprisingly really fun origin story this late in the game for Marvel. So... That's my review. Sending it back to you guys. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Nick. So for he that. gave it yeah, I, seven I w- out of the ten rings. That's there what, you go. That's what he gave. <laughs> yeah, seven rings out of ten. Yeah, I, I've heard good things about this film. Obviously, we're in like kind of phase four, I believe now. After Endgame, we're getting a lot more origin stories. We got this Eternals. You know, we're kind of starting up a new batch of superheroes for the next big ensemble film at some mm. point. Uh, it's, it's the number one film at the domestic box office right now. It's it's beating the other superhero films of the year, Venom 2 and Black Widow. So, yeah. I just uh, need, I, again, I don't know with the price of admission for these Marvel movies. It's like, what do I need to know? Can I get a Cliff's Notes? Everything. And then, and then just like go in or can I go in cold and still enjoy it? Like They conveniently made... A hundred plus hours of video backstory you can watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Thanks. I'll, be, I'll be sure to get on that. I'll get right on that. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Speaking of something you need to know, a lot of backstory too. All right. You're right, Kyle. You're right. Number one, 
Yeah. Dune. 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 Hey. Okay. I like this movie, dude. Yeah, I thought I thought it was fine. I thought it was okay. Like, it's one of those movies that yeah, it's only been a couple months, and I'm already like, wait, what happened again? It's kind of like I have to go back. I'm like, I gotta think about it. I'm really curious how it's gonna play because I I saw this one in theaters. I'm curious how it's gonna play years from now on 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 my TV or on my my wait, iPhone you saw or Doom my in theaters. I did. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I watched yeah. it from home. And I, it looks fantastic. Oh, well, there you go. You got a nice TV, though. You got a... <laughs> I will say it there. You got a nice yeah. TV. So. Yeah, it is nice. But, I mean, overall, I'm, it's still, to me, it's still a great uh, movie. I mean, I watched it one in like three quarters times in the first weekend. <laughs> so I was down. I was down with it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, looking at the votes, um, there was for our survey, you could do one vote per person. And you could choose... Uh, multiple films in each category uh, but this was at least on I, I believe if I'm doing the math correctly 45% of the ballots this was their number this is one of their mm-hmm. films that they picked um, it's number 12 at the domestic box office it has 92 million so far domestically right behind Godzilla vs. Kong remember that <laughs> remember that movie on HBO Max this year yeah. um, but this one is 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 earning the the awards at least the nominations right now obviously it's a technical mm. You know, feet, uh, ten Critics Choice Awards, three Golden Globe Awards. I don't know what, or whatever. I guess are we still doing that? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> like yeah. I don't think so. I whatever. But who knows with the Oscars if uh, what what's to come for that? But yeah, I mean, I, I I'd say as I said when we discussed it, um, I I had this movie so hyped up for me that it was gonna like change my life, and you know, we we went through all those tweets and stuff, and while it didn't reach that level, I still enjoyed it i thought it was visually awesome um you know i had some questions with the story because again they're like what do i need to know like how much do i have to know going in to this world because it's a dense book a lot of backstory but i think they i i think they do a good job of setting it up because we're learning (laughs) through the timothee chalamet's character there so we get a lot of that Mm -hmm. backstory of what we need to know in in those moments and i think that's what um makes it play so well because it didn't seem like exposition where we're just talking about it. There seems to be a purpose to it. And it's like, he's learning as well. And we're trying to learn with it. So it made it an interesting little, um, kind of tidbit along the way. All right. Those were our films, our top three films. Uh, I'm going to go through some other things on the survey where I'll talk about some films that got multiple write-ins. These are films that were in our initial, top 20 or 30 but they got at least multiple mm-hmm. votes so i'll give them a mention um we got uh, titane the french dispatch pig and then this one hard to classify definitely would be on my list of favorites if it is a film bo burnham's oh, inside yeah. we, they got some multiple write-ins i would agree i didn't know yeah. where to put it on the survey what is this is movie tv show yeah special we don't it's it's like a hard thing to classify yeah, it almost feels like a special to me but i guess it would be yeah. a film i don't know but to but since it's a comedian you kind of think of it as a special you know what i mean yeah, yeah. It, it's tough i mean it was up for emmys but so was hamilton so yeah. like i don't know what any of this means anymore but uh that would be on my list uh, for the year anything that's on your guys's list any favorite movies uh from the year that you want to shout out uh john anything you know what inside and dune i think were the two the two high points for me i i ha- there's a couple of these on this list that i'm looking at that i still want to see but i just haven't had the time to go see them yet so mm-hmm. kyle um for me uh i would say dune was probably my favorite um of the year i haven't actually seen that many movies this year i gotta like catch up on all the things that i missed um but uh uh, i would say dune i liked zola it wasn't my favorite i was expecting a little bit uh something a little bit better but i did enjoy zola um uh but that's really i would say dune is probably my top yeah Yeah, and and this is always hard because this year is especially weird because the 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 Oscars normally like separate the year. I feel mm-hmm. like what's classified because on my list I, I mentioned Inside, Luca, Mitchell versus the Machines, but like Minari, you know, and some of the other like Oscar films would be on it. They're technically 2021 releases yeah. uh, because 
the Oscars were so late this year that they were 2021. Mm. So I would put those on my list. Um, I will say some some zero vote getters. These are ones, you know, not to say that they're they all because a lot of films got zero because they're not even mentioned. But these were in our top 20 or 30 that didn't get really any votes. Um, I'll see one vote only for Fast 9, okay. F9, which is kind of crazy. The movie made like yeah. 726 <laughs> million worldwide. It's the number four movie of like domestically yeah. like you think it would have more mm. love if that many people saw it uh and then zero for old no love for old uh did you yeah. see old no i not do yet. want to check it out i know but... i want to check it out but right now it's still like 20 bucks for rental and i'm like eh. <laughs> sorry m night uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry what about not there yet uh, christopher not... nolan's movie there or was that last year I think that was that was 2020. He made yeah. sure it was 2020. Yeah. <laughs> he made it go out in 2020. Yeah. Um, but all right, let's now move to TV. Uh, we started doing this um, last. I think last year we did three TV categories because there's just so much mm. TV. We're going to start off with returning shows. Uh, the shows that obviously have multiple seasons been going on for a while. Um, 2018 was The Good Place. 2019 Chernobyl. Last year, The Boys, honorable mention, starting off. Curb Your Enthusiasm, oh, wow. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Okay. Uh, they just missed the cut. Uh, any thoughts on these comedies? We got the final season of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We got the 11th season of Curb Your Enthusiasm, 21 years later. <laughs> but I think uh, yeah. I think with Curb, it's like still very good, uh, but I think it's past its prime, so to speak. But it's still very, very good, and you still want to watch it. Uh, but I don't think it's like appointment viewing or anything where it's like, ah, oh, yeah. man, I got to watch Curb. It's like, OK, uh, I'll enjoy it when I get to it. Um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Uh, I only saw that finale there. But um, but yeah, I mean, I think people were excited about the, the final the final thing. And you you talked about them trying to navigate, you know, the all the yeah. police brutality stuff. But I think with the finale, they I think the finale for fans, uh, it was a good send off. I like to, I like the finale yeah. for sure. Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. It's I feel like yeah, with Curb right now, it's like pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty good. If you if you have to like, it's you know, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, is it the high of of, of earlier seasons? No, mm. is it as any? But any episode of Curb is yeah. a good episode of TV. Usually, you get at least a chuckle here mm-hmm. and there, even though it's not perfect. But yeah, all right. Uh, the next three shows were really all neck and neck. I mean, only one vote separated the number two show, and the number one show. So these are, they're in their own little tier here. Any thoughts? Top three shows of the year, Kyle. Oh, man. Of returning? Returning shows. I'm going to say The Handmaid's Tale is on there. I'm going to say Ted Lasso is on there. And I'm going to say Succession is on there. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. I don't want to give too much away. You did pretty good again. You passed. If we're gonna go with percentages, I'll I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Is sixty five passing? Uh, <laughs> yes. Um. So number three. Is a comedy, just like Curb in Brooklyn Nine Nine. It's not Handmaid's Tale. No. It's what we do it's in the that. shadows. <laughs> what we do yeah. in the shadows, season three. Uh-huh. Uh. What did you think of what we do in the shadows, Kyle? Uh, I liked it. Um, there was some, uh, really good episodes, uh, with, uh, uh, shoot, what's his name? Laszlo? Colin Robinson? No, La- or, La- or Matt Barry, La- Laszlo, uh, who, uh, who the, shoot, I, dude, I'm losing my mind. Um, but yes, Matt Barry. Nandor? And, I don't know who And talking. Colin Robinson, the one where they have to go onto that island and get, mm. that's funny. The one where uh, the the main dude there is like working out, yeah. like he's taking yeah Nandor, Nandor in the like the little basement eighties yeah, outfit there. Yep. Um, I liked the season overall. You know who I actually really don't like with this show, and I it's might be with you. Annoying who is it? Is the uh, Guillermo, and I don't know yeah. what they're gonna do with him, but I feel like he brings. It's like a buzzkill, man. <laughs> it really is. Uh, the all the other and it's funny because Colin Robinson is literally like a yeah. blood sucking or energy sucking <laughs> but that's kill. funny to but, watch but yeah. uh, he's just I don't know I don't like uh, that character too much I so. hear you uh, overall I think it's a solid solid choice by the viewers yeah 
Yeah, I'd say I'd say it's it's all it's always funny. I'm always excited to see what what they come up with. Maybe not as strong mm -hmm. as season two yeah, for me, two uh, but they still had some good moments. And obviously, this whole spoiler, real quick, fifteen seconds skip ahead, but the death of one of these characters and his mm -hmm. rebirth was going to lead to a lot of interesting things. I think in season yeah. four uh, when that comes yep. around. But all right, all right, our next two shows, as I said, one vote separated them. I'll tell you, yes, you're right. It's succession number two on the oh, list. Wow. All right. It's, uh, it's leading at the Critics' mm -hmm. Choice and the Golden Globes. Um, yeah, we just finished the season on Sunday night. We previewed the finale last week, and boy, what a finale yeah. it was. I guess we're going to have to talk spoilers. Uh, sorry, that's just the way it goes <laughs> here. Uh, but Kyle, thoughts on, on season three of Succession and the finale? Uh, the finale was phenomenal. I think it was pr probably the, I think the best episode of the season to me, um, at first. And I mean, and we talked about this at first early on in the season, I was kind of down on it. It felt smaller. It felt more contained. It didn't feel like the same vibe, but then we get out to the last few episodes and um you know they're at the the italian villas and they're dealing with all this stuff and and it was got really really good uh towards the end and everything really paid off um and i think going back now i, I would have an appreciation for the earlier episodes because they're laying the groundwork for all of this stuff to happen it's almost kind of how i feel about like the first season when we were first watching it, it's like what's going yeah. on like why should i care like what and and i then think that's it, like every yeah. season i feel like the first half maybe individually doesn't like you know they're good but like where are we going yeah. where are we going and then the last half of the season it's just like I mean, yeah this season with the, with the birthday and then the start of the wedding and then this episode it's just like everything comes together and you know it's a house of cards it all falls down half the mm. time and it's it builds up, and then I think now you can appreciate what we saw before, and as a whole, it all all clicks, and it was all setting up something so well. You know, again, spoilers, but, you know, it's like we talked about, is, is Kendall dying? And I'm so glad yeah. he's okay, kind yeah. of. I mean, emotionally, he's a wreck. <laughs> yeah. his, sp his spirit is certainly yeah. killed. <laughs> his spirit's gone. But, like, it was enough for the kids to team up, and then, you know, trying to take down Logan... But then it still wasn't enough because we get this Shakespearean betrayal from Tom. And it's just there's so many like moments in that finale of just jaw dropping. Like, oh, my God, we just went there. Oh, my God. No, we have to mm. wait to season four. And but I'm so ready for it. And I, I will say, as always, so many like I don't even know for Emmys this year. I mean, Jeremy Strong obviously is always an MVP. Yeah. The whole scene when he's down there on, on the ground with his two siblings around him. Powerhouse performance. We talked about it last week with Kieran Culkin this yeah. season. What a season for him. And then obviously with Matthew McFadden for yeah, Tom. Yeah. It to like, me, it was Tom like Tom's year. Yeah. I, th I think Definitely. this was the season. That's of the one Tom. I'm rooting for. And yeah. I, he's so good at he's so good at like playing that kind of like in the background character, but he's a vital player. And then he's this manipulator when it comes to Greg, like he's all of these different things and he just does such a good job with it. So I hope he wins something for it. Yeah. Yeah. So I believe at least if it's like last year, Jeremy and um, uh, Brian Cox are in lead people like uh, Kiernan and um, Nicholas Braun and M Matthew McFadden, they're all going to be in supporting. So uh, probably maybe a little tough. It's both categories are tough to be up against Brian or Jeremy or, you know, any of them is, is mm -hmm. tough. But, yeah, what a season. I can't wait for season four. Um, yeah, I got another show, Kyle. You said it. Number one, by one vote over succession, Ted Lasso. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the season one swept the mm. Emmys. But I feel like season two had a little bit more of a mixed reaction. Mm. Uh, at least during the season. I can't remember exactly how the people felt by the end of season two, but... What did you think of season two? I liked it um, as, uh, you know, as we got to the end, there was a villain in sight. There was something going again. There was some conflict there that made it a little bit better. Uh, there were a few episodes where you're like, is this show jumping the shark here? Like it's the, there was a Christmas episode, which was kind of controversial. And then to me, 
uh, that funeral episode where they're doing like the Rick rolling was a little bit too much. But um, but overall, I mean, it's still a feel good show. I think um, I think you're you root for Ted Lasso. You want them to win. You, they they make you feel good. It's like this show that is carrying the pandemic. I feel like, but um, yeah, yeah I, I think all the characters are really really likable, except uh, the one that was created a villain, and now. I feel like that's going to be able to push it through into the next season. Yeah, for me, because I binge season one like real quick right before season two. And maybe it's a, maybe it's because of that. Maybe because doing a binge versus a week by week thing. Maybe I, I still like season one mm-hmm. better. Yeah, um, me too. Maybe it's also discovering these mm-hmm. characters and then seeing season two. Because for a while, we, we didn't really have an antagonist for mm-hmm. a while. In the first half of the season, it was like all the people that were mean season one are now like best buddies with yeah. Ted and there's no issues and there's no drama. But then obviously, as the season went on, it's certainly for season three, we set up some drama. Uh, but yeah, uh, still, still a good time. Episodes did get longer. They really were yeah. pushing the the half hour yeah. comedy aspect of of the show. But for sure, yeah, not bad. I would have Succession as my number one. But yeah, pro- I can't quibble. Yeah, too me much. too. But I, I mean, you. It's just. I think Ted Lasso is just such a feel-good show. It's like one of those things where it's like um, ranked choice voting. It's like if you have it down mm. in the list, it's gonna you know be there. Uh, let's see here. Let's talk about some other TV shows. Um, these are the ones that got multiple write-ins: yeah. uh, S- Star Trek Lower Decks, Doom Patrol. Uh, even saw Better Call Saul got some love, which not 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 eligible this year, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and then let's see some some zero votes. Uh, I, I couldn't find anything with zero. Uh, there were some low ones. Um, they all got something. Uh, but TV Guide's number one show, Evil, only got two votes. TV Guide. And uh, that's remember remember talking about that. And then the phenomenon. That was season one. Season two came along for Tiger King. Just one vote. Yeah. One person uh, voting for Tiger King 2. Too much. Too um, much. People asking too much. too much. Don't worry. We're getting some, I'm sure, in 2022, those series, those uh, scripted uh, oh, Tiger God. King series yeah. are going to come out. Can't wait. Can't yeah, wait. Too long. It's mm. over with. It's over. Yep. Move on. Um. What were your guys' favorite shows of the year? Uh, John, do you have any favorites we haven't talked about or anything that stood out to you in the past year returning show-wise? Returning shows? Um, I did have one, I thought. Uh, look at the list. No. No, nothing. <laughs> nothing for John returning. Uh, and you're no. waiting for Saul. I know you. Yeah, I know you. I, I, that was my one vote. I, I squandered yeah. it. <laughs> uh, what about you, uh, I would have to say I think you should leave um was yeah. for me one of, oh, one yeah. of the one of the tops okay. um dave was good too yeah very very good you got my list don't yeah. you that's, those are my that uh those two succession those are my yeah. top three uh, yeah great was all right yeah well technically i will say we watched the great season one i don't know if you've seen season two yet john season two is the 2021 i started show. it Okay, okay. Yeah. I'll, g- I'll give you that. Um, I'll have to say the other two was good, too. The other yeah, two, The yeah. other two was good as well. Um, was The Crown on in 2021 or no? Uh, I don't believe yeah, so. I, I believe that was the yeah, end of 2020. It's just like a blur the lines. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, I'm going to shout out my reality TV show, Survivor, mm. Circle, Bake Off. Uh, I all, they all had some good seasons this year, so... Uh, Share some love Every time for those I hear you reality about shows. Survivor, it's like you're angry with it, though. Well, I, I am a pa- I'm a passionate <laughs> fan. Any for me, any Survivor is good Survivor. Just probably how you like, yo, football, you Green Bay, you're excited, <laughs> but like they can disappoint you sometimes. Sure, I'm yes. sure. So that's okay, what this is. Like the right. cast, the cast is top notch this season. There's a lot of choices that the producers made that I wasn't thrilled okay. with. Now but, you got them going, yeah. Kyle. No, that's yeah. fair. Enough yeah. time. Yeah. We don't have time. We got to move now to new shows. The new shows that came out in the past mm-hmm. year. Again, to give you a little list, 2019 was also Chernobyl. 2020 somehow was Mythic Quest Raven's oh, Banquet. Oh, yeah. Neither are new this year. Neither are eligible. 
uh, for this category. What are your thoughts, Kyle, of new shows on this new list in the top shows. three? New shows. Um, there's a few that I, I I liked quite a bit. Um, but overall, uh, looking at the list, there's none that I was like, oh my God, this is so good, looking at this list. It's mostly returning shows that I liked or the limited anthology. Mm-hmm. But looking at the new shows, there's just a few. I, I think I do have like a top three that I would choose. Okay, well, real quick, you want to run yeah, them down? So, see if those are the top uh, three America ones or the world ones? Maybe one okay. from that list. Uh, Made for Love, I liked. And um, I did like Squid Game as well. And I think those would be probably my three. It would be your personal top yes, three. I think so. America and the world did not agree. All right. Well, they don't know what they're with talking about. With two of about. those. You failed, yeah. Kyle. That's a 33. You failed. Now you're, now you're at 33%. <laughs> Number three on the list, a very buzzy show, a Hulu breakthrough, only murders in the building. Okay. Is number three? Um, number three on the list. Interesting. Okay. Um, I, I, I saw a little bit there. Uh, I think I saw the first episode. I've seen, a lot of people really love it. Did you guys watch more of it? Nope. No. Yeah, you guys no. didn't keep going. Did not impress. It's been... It's, it seemed like a mini series at first, but then I guess it became so popular that it's been renewed for season two, so it does count as a new series. But yeah, I just didn't have enough to finish this. Yeah. I, I it's one of those shows where it's like I'll watch it eventually. I I, I heard it's good, but it doesn't seem like appointment viewing yeah. for me that I have to watch this right now immediately. To me, I, I hate to say it, but Steve Martin and uh, mm. Martin Short are just a little bit too corny for me. Sometimes it's like. Mm. A little bit too old white white dude comedy for me. Yeah. Yeah. To, to quote a Steve Martin movie title, you're you're the yeah. jerk, yeah. Kyle. I am the jerk. <laughs> but yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. But you got the the millennial uh, Selena Gomez. Oh, that'll tie Kyle. it together. Can, sure, that'll yeah. tie it together. And it's about podcasts. We like podcasts. Don't I we? mean, hey, I was just gonna say this. Um, like I just read an article that like some some people like th- there's been like five amateur like uh like figuring out cold cases like five amateur yeah. five amateur cases have been did closed it? because the the internet yeah. man the the fans the Reddit the I mean I I don't know if you guys ever saw the um the mini series Don't F with Cats on uh, Netflix. Oh, you have it. No. Uh, it, it, it's a tough watch at points because of the the subject matter, but it's this kind of internet sleuthing that yeah. is really crazy. Like, it's, it's really cool. Um, yeah, apparently but... this guy, this diver went down and found a car for like th- that got <laughs> submerged that, uh, you know, the, these couple went missing in, and he found the car at the bottom of like this river. I'm like, what? People are doing this? Well, not me. <laughs> Oh, well, now let's see here. Uh, number two, we'll go on the list here. It, it beat murders by just one vote. Again, it was very close. We got over 100 votes in this thing, and there's still uh, just a couple of votes separating each one. Loki, number two. Of course, of course, we got to have a superhero show uh, make the cut. I'd say, for me, of the four or five Marvel Disney Plus shows we got, this was probably the most interesting one for me. Probably the one I watched more of, I think. Maybe this and WandaVision were like the two I spent most time with. I didn't finish either of them. Mm. But like, it was the most intriguing. The whole time travel element. And I was like, okay, we're doing something new here. We're setting stuff up. Okay, I, I like this. But yeah, it, it still wasn't enough as a non-superhero fan for me to, to finish. But uh, Kyle, what do you think of Loki? Uh, yeah, I... Uh... I found it interesting. I liked WandaVision more. So I actually finished WandaVision, but I never finished Loki. Um, but, I mean, production design-wise and all that thing, they, it was it was good. I think it's a lot better than the Hawkeye crap. But, um, yeah. Don't go on that yeah. rant again. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I thought, it, I thought it was okay. I just never kept up with it. I just don't, I don't know. Superheroes just don't do it for me. Yeah. maybe next year to, to, I mean, will this be a 
you know, riding in the streets. If we made just a category of all the superhero stuff that came out, and they can be in their own category, yeah. and then we can do other movies and TV shows separate. <laughs> I don't know. Because they're always top three, and it's like... You gotta get... You're, for us, you're we... You're trying to game yeah. the system. Yeah. I don't know. That's probably bla- blasphemous. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll make it all fair. But it's still the only number two on the list. There was something that beat it. And is there any question this year what beat it? I mean... It's the most popular show ever for Netflix and probably just ever. Squid Game. Mm. Uh, this generated, like, I think, literally a billion dollars for the streamer in like the first month. I think we talked about it. It was like a twenty million dollar budget, revenue like over like a mm. billion dollars. It's it's breaking through at award shows, even you know the American award shows like the Critics Choice. And it, it this is big. This was a phenomenon. This was something everyone was talking about for those two or three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was Halloween costumes. Yeah. It was parodied on SNL. It, I mean, what more can we say mm-hmm. about Squid Game, John? Uh, I, you went through it quick. I really enjoyed it. I I I was on board, man. I mean, obviously everyone else seems to be as well. But um, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely one of those one of those shows where you know even though it's not in English, that only kind of almost enhances it. You know. Um, and I think we've seen that more and more recently lately where, where, um, stuff that's kind of imported and not translated has been doing well. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, the, the, the season two kind of setup was a little sad, but at the same I'm time, worried. Yeah, I'm worried. I, I really was hoping for a prequel, not a sequel when I, mm, when I was mm. watching it, because there is a world here that they can explain better and I think that would go a lot more, a lot longer than spoilers. Um, just having the same thing again, like and, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I feel like we have a whole, a whole exploration and, and how this came to be, and and yeah. how what was the first Squid Game? Yeah, like? and and how you know, obviously, uh, one of the again spoilers reveals in the, in the middle of the series is that the the investigator's brother is the guy running the place. How did he get yeah. into power? How long has he been there? Has he been going back and forth between real life? Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, there's just so much more. And they had this whole big, this whole big closet of records and all these people. And, like, you could easily pick another person mm-hmm. to be the, the main character and explain the story of the main guy. There's, I don't know. There's a lot that they could do. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping that they realize that and, and go that route instead of just sending um, the same the same thing later yeah because as you mentioned like with the investigator there i feel like that's what we're kind of going to get with season two with our main character who's who again spoiler survived the game it sounds like he's gonna like go back in and try to get him from the inside and it's like well that's what we kind of had with the investigator Mm -hmm. and like i feel like we're going to kind of repeat some of the plot points from that season again who knows they can obviously always surprise us we were surprised with this season with everything that they did but yeah uh I'm always just going in with hesitation, you know, when, once you have something so popular, you know, I don't need a Queen's Gambit too. Mm. I don't need, that was great as it is. And, and so I'm always worried, but on top of that, the old man story, you have like, hmm? you have so many different people you could yeah. do a backstory on and how it intertwines all together. And it, give me a young Sheldon of the <laughs> old man. I just need, but all right. Uh, let's talk about some write-ins. Uh, the one I really want to talk about, is something that got votes in every TV category. In, in the returning, the new, I don't know if people didn't know what it was, but it was it was getting write-ins in every TV category that we did. So many, in fact, in this one alone, that if we were going to do a number four, it would be wow. this show. How did, That's how many weird. write-ins it got. It is Arcane, which is a Netflix adult animated series from a French studio set in the League of Legends universe. Okay. I don't know next to anything about this. Do either of you guys know of this show? I've heard of this no. show. I've heard of I League of Legends. Know League is. Yeah, yeah I, I, I've heard mm. the name, but I've never played it. I have no idea what it is, to be honest. But yeah, that, that's how many... It got so many votes that if we're going to look at like what was number four on the list in this category, it would be this. Outside of the other wow. 20 shows I put on mm. it. So... How long until Netflix gives it its own live action treatment, cowboy bebop style? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they learned yeah, their lesson maybe. with that. I don't know. That's pretty wild, though. I mean, I know what League of Legends is, but I don't. I have no idea. But it it must be yeah. based off of that video game. So it's a animated show based off of a video game. I believe wow. so. 
Okay. It's doing well enough to get technically number four on our list. Um, Over shows that got zero votes that were on the list. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Physical, the reboot of The Wonder Years, they all got zero votes on the list there. Um, any, any, any favorites that we haven't talked about, guys? Anything that stood out on your list? I know Kyle has said yeah. his favorites. John, any, any favorites? Um, I really like String of Dune. That was pretty good. Okay. Um, I think we discussed Squid Game. That was the highlight for me. Yeah. But um, if I had to choose a second, I think I think it was uh, Shrink of Dune. Yeah. Yeah, I think Squid Game's on my list. One show I'm I'm, I'm into. I don't, I don't love it yet, but like there's definitely things I'm interested every week with. It's actually on Showtime. So I've been watching it weekly here. It's only a couple episodes in, but Yellow Jackets. Mm. It's a little bit lost. It's a you know, it's. It's interesting. There's a mystery element. I'm I'm always hesitant, especially with Showtime. Yeah. I don't want to go down any kind of supernatural route. Like I'm, I'm gonna see where this is going. So I'm going in with hesitation. But right now, I've been enjoying Yellow Jackets. But all right, one last TV category to talk about, and it's the miniseries anthology category. Mm-hmm. Um, 2020 uh, was the first year we did this category. So I'll just give you the top three from that year. From last year here. Number three, The Haunting of Bly Manor. Number two, Tiger King. Oh boy. And of course, number one, The Queen's mm. Gambit. Those were our three. This year, uh, the next Mike Flanagan show just kind of missed it. Uh, it was Midnight Mass is in that same kind of tier. They're all kind of nearly tied in that mm. like fourth place, fifth place, sixth place area. Midnight Mass was was there with three Marvel shows: Hawkeye, What If, Falcon and Winter Soldier. All all four of those shows were kind of in this own little tier. So it's the one that doesn't belong, Midnight mm-hmm. Mass. Um, but I'm glad a lot of those superhero shows those weren't our top yeah. three, and we have different stuff. I'm kind of glad about that. But all right, any guesses though, Kyle? What's in the top three then? If uh, if those superhero shows aren't in I'm it, I'm gonna go the with... ones I mentioned. Mayor of East Town, The White Lotus, and that's all. That's all I got. I don't know. Those are the only two that I can think of. Okay, I might I might have tricked you a little bit with my wording on on things, but you're you're good. You're good with those with those two. Because number three, The White mm. Lotus. Yeah. Um, this one was like a weird one to to put on the list because for the longest time, I'm like, well, is it a miniseries? It's been renewed mm. for season two. But I'm treating it like American Crime Story yeah. and Love Life and those kind of shows where because it's going to be nearly all new cast. It's going to be a new location. So I'm like, okay, it's the it's just like the title really is the only carryover. So it's a mini series. But um, thoughts on the White Lotus, Kyle? Uh, I thought it was really good. Um, the, the characters were insane. Um, to, the story was really well done. Um, but I think this 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 whole show was about the characters and how they were written and especially that uh armand i think was his name a really really well uh acted care uh character so uh if you're into you know good writing good acting good uh character development this show does a really really good job yeah it was a real f- a fun summer surprise it was kind of went in like Oh, this might be interesting and i was weekly i was like i gotta watch the yeah. new white lotus mm-hmm. and um what a soundtrack this oh, show yeah. had too oh, yeah. what a soundtrack uh john any other thoughts on the white lotus this takes the category for me uh i know it's yeah. not first in the vote but this is definitely i think out of all the ones we had um the the highlight for this category for me so i, I really enjoyed it and i hope that they keep up the feel and energy for whatever they do next i'm sad uh armand will be a part of it but uh, hopefully that maybe it'll be a prequel maybe yeah, we'll knows? see i can we can we can hope um but yeah I, I i i'm looking forward to maybe seeing some more all right all right number two another hbo show mayor of east town uh, all right number two uh this one's really picking up some uh you know awards uh we already got four emmy awards it's got five critics choice nominations two golden globe nominations uh, it's, you know, it's really picking up some some hardware here, and it's of course it's like the annual HBO mystery. It's the Big Little Lies. It's the Sharp Objects. Every year they always got something, and this was the one mm-hmm. this year. Uh, thoughts, Kyle, on Mayor of Easttown? Uh, I like this a lot too. Um, 
I mean, Kate Winslet is fantastic in it. Uh, it has that little bit of, you know, mystery element, good character development. Um, and just the, there's some scenes that are just fantastic. That, that one uh, scene at the end with the, with the woman that won the Emmy, I'm pretty sure. Right. For the, yeah. for that uh, intense scene at the end. So, um, a lot of good acting, good performances. I really liked Mare of Easttown. Um, yeah, I, I think it's just a really, really well done. This is like classic HBO right here, I think. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Um, we have Mare of Easttown. Any of you guys watch Mayor of Kingstown on Paramount Plus? No. Uh, it just came out in the last month. Why didn't they change the name? This is too <laughs> yeah. confusing. Mayor of Easttown, Mayor of Kingstown. Guys, change it up. <laughs> Do something different. Uh, even if it's just a Kingstown mayor, yeah. like just something. But man, uh, yeah. Now Jeremy Renner's mm-hmm. in that. Uh, you could be watching that, that and Hawkeye. But um, no, yeah, I I liked Mayor of Easttown. Uh, I think of of the two we've talked about so far. I I think I probably maybe just because White Lotus was such like more mm-hmm. fun. I probably would have that as like if I had to rewatch one or something, I'd yeah, go White too. Lotus first, then Mayor of Easttown. But yeah, the, the acting between all the leads w- was great. Um, yeah. All right, number one. I kind of led you a little astray when I said earlier that three Marvel shows were so honorable you're mentions. you're telling me there is. I, all right, with that in mind. Not many more I'm on the list. Go with Wanda Vis- process Wanda of elimination. Vision? WandaVision, number one. Yeah. Number one, here we go. I, there was a lot of Emmys like, will it be Mare? Will it be Queen's Gambit? Will it be WandaVision? Obviously, Queen's Gambit and uh, Mayor kind of had the win there, but no, WandaVision has the win here. <laughs> in the vote that really uh, counts. <laughs> the one that really counts. I think, again, as I mentioned earlier, I think it, like the show started off strong for me. I really liked like, the beginning of it when it was different, when it was unique, when they were doing parodies of all these different genres. But then by the end, and that's when I kind of zoned out and tuned out, Okay, it's another Marvel light show of, of visual effects. It was just like, all right, yeah, we got to do a Marvel thing at the end of this. And it was just too many lasers. And it's just, it just, that's where it lost me when it became the mm. movies again. Um, but you saw the whole thing, Kyle. What did you end up thinking of Wanda? I liked it. Overall, I, I liked it. Um, I enjoyed it a lot, uh, a lot more than I do with the normal uh, Marvel stuff. And I, I really was digging the, um, the different genres of television and I love Catherine Hahn. So I think she did a great job and you know, it was that Agatha all the way stuff kind of went Agatha all, yeah, along. all along. How dare whatever. you get that Dude, wrong? You know, come at me, whatever. <laughs> it was a pop culture. I know. Phenomenon. I know. So I'm saying it was like a viral, yeah. whole viral thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed it overall. Do I think it was the best Number one, no, I wouldn't have chose that as number it one. Is, though. But it is. <laughs> I know. Just messing. I'm just messing with you. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I I enjoyed it. Again, didn't think it was the greatest thing ever, but definitely enjoyed that genre stuff. Um, in fact, I think in Catherine Hahn said in like a podcast or something that she didn't think people would get it because it was like so old, like all the old genre, TV genre mm-hmm. things. Yeah, at this point, I feel like you could do anything, put the Marvel logo yeah. on it, and they'd be they'd be yeah. watching it, no matter what it is mm-hmm. at this point. Um, maybe these shows that got zero and one votes should have just slapped Marvel <laughs> on it, and they they would have got some. Holston, the Emmy winning Holston, <laughs> zero votes, uh, and then scenes from a marriage. The premise, remember that yeah. B J Novak's the premise, and the shrink next door all got one vote. That when was I think it, about that the... premise show, it's like, why did he introduce this stuff? It's so annoying to That's me. That's what I was saying on I the know. episode. I mean, yeah. yeah, I remember we talked about yeah. that, but still, even more so, it's like, dude, you we know how TV works. Thanks. Oh, his name's on it. He has to be part of it. Yeah. The billboards, everything. It's like, I don't know. I mean, you got John Bernthal, you got Tracy Ellis Ross, you got Lucas Hedges. You have, you can put them on the poster yeah. too, you know, like they're Oscar nominated people, but, um, yeah, um, let's see, analysts. I, I said kind of my favorites, Mayor and White Lois. John, I know you said White Lois. Is there anything else on your list? Um, American Crime Story was pretty good. Uh, I, I enjoyed that. I don't think it was quite as strong as season one, but it was still good. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Dexter. Yeah, Dexter. I've been watching. I haven't watched. I haven't watched it yet. I'm, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm binging them at some point. It's weird. There's some good <laughs> and some bad. So I don't know if I would say it would be in my top three, but uh, it's not bad. We'll, hmm. we'll discuss it on a future podcast. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, Midnight Mass. I forgot that one. I really like Midnight yeah. Mass of the Mike Flanagan shows. That's on my list. Kyle, what about uh, you? I like Midnight Mass. I like Love Life this season a lot. I thought it was hmm. better than. Um, last season and uh i've been sure that i'm working my way through it and I, i've been liking it so i've only seen like two or three but I, yeah, i've been like yeah it. i think it's it, i think it's uh better than the first season and i i enjoyed it more maybe it's from a guy's perspective that's maybe that's why i enjoyed it a little bit more but i do think i just think it's i just think it's better mm. all right one last category to talk about it's one of the kind of the, the fun ones for me the pop culture mm-hmm. moments uh, the, the, can this can go any which oh way? Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, uh, 2018, we had a tie between the Tide Pod Challenge and the Fortnite Takeover. Uh, in 2019, the Game of Thrones final season, everything from the coffee cup to all the backlash about the finale. Okay. Uh, 2020, though, we, we skipped it. We said <laughs> it's COVID. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason to hold a vote. What was the thing that was the moment, the, the pop culture zeitgeist thing of the year? Well, that was... The thing that we all if were affected yeah. by. But let's see here. Uh, I got some honorable mentions, and then I'll see what you guys think for the top three. Uh, some ones I want to bring up uh, that just missed it. The billionaire space race and the Jeopardy hosting debacle okay. with the whole Mike Richards thing. They just missed the cut mm-hmm. here. Um, yeah, the Jeopardy one, it, that was the thing. Like We were like weekly yeah, on the talking podcast about talking it. about it. It was wild. And still, to this day, they don't have a, a host. permanent host. Yeah. They have two <laughs> back and forth alternates. But like between I, like the guest host thing, getting all these these random people to join in, doing like on, like live on air auditions for us, and then to have this guy who's the EP deciding who's going to be the job decides that he will get the uh, job, and then he immediately doesn't get the job after filming like a, a week of episodes. It's like. What a disaster. Wild. Yeah. It was a total, total disaster. Yeah. I don't know. Is he, I can't remember. He's not EP anymore, right? No, yeah. he's not. So he just screwed up his Blue life, Blew too close man. to the sun. He lost I everything. Know. Oh, no. Dude. All right. All right. Let's see here. All right. Top three. Kyle, what's, <sighs> what's, what's the big moments from the, the year? Top three. Dude, so hard. If I had to guess. Yeah. Which you're making me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I would say the Bernie at the inauguration. Maybe the... Dude, it's so hard because all of these things happen in like little slivers of time. And it's like, what what yeah. stood out for the, that, that most? Um, I would say based on who's voted, the GameStop stock shorting is going to mm. show up. And maybe the... I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to run through some other ones just that you okay. haven't said so we can remind people at home. Uh, you got the Bones or No Bones Day. Got all the celebrities admitting that they don't like the shower. Remember that, that whole one? thing? I missed that yeah. one. You don't remember that? No. It was like Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher yeah. like, did like this article that they don't think they have to like wash their kids. And then they talk about not showering. And then like Jake Gyllenhaal what? piggybacks yeah. on that. And then they kept like snowballing. And then they had to like go, no, 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 we shower. It's just like, Is this, like it was just the key to fame whole, is to whole... not shower anymore. Is that why yes. I've been in a rut? Maybe. Well, I know like uh, back in the day, Matthew McConaughey says he doesn't use soap. He just uses like a... Yeah. A pumice stone to wipe the dead skin cells off his body or something like that. Yeah, there was the cinnamon toast crunch shrimp okay. thing. Remember the guy yeah. said he found shrimp uh, tails in his in his uh-huh. cereal. Uh, the Yahtzee strike, the James. the milk crate James. challenge, Nicki Minaj's cousin. Uh, I'll leave yeah. it at that. Classic. Classic. Uh, the stuff with NFTs and the uh, Steve from Blue's Clues showing up out of nowhere. Mm. Uh, but yeah, none of those uh, that I mentioned made the list. A couple things Kyle did, but nobody said number three. It was when the Suez yeah. Canal was yeah. blocked. Yeah, that was like a thing. Whoops. <laughs> yep. Uh, it was. How are we going to get uh, this big for... ship out of the way? <laughs> <laughs> this is like it was. It was blocked for six days back in March. 
uh, when the when the evergreen or ever given ever it's it was evergreen ever green is in the picture evergreen is the name but, of the boat uh, of the boat and ever given's the company no ever yeah i think that was it because i looked it up and i'm like i'm looking it up now ever given was the the is one of the 13 container ships built there so that was one of the ships but it's labeled evergreen a anyways there was something that blocked the suez canal <laughs> a big boat no way ships were able to bypass thing it had this huge impact from what i can understand here it was about 9.6 billion dollars of, of different, you know, trade uh, stuff, not being able to get through for Europe and Asia and all the country. A day. 9.6 billion. A day. That's wild. Like, and it was for six days it was blocked there. They just couldn't get around it. Just seeing, like, the images and thinking about this, it reminds me so much of Austin Powers. You know the scene I'm talking oh, about? Yeah. With the little, he somehow gets his, like, go-kart, like, yeah. stuck in the hallway. It's like, how did you yeah. even get it into that? How? Oh, man. But, yeah wow yeah that's exactly what that's like <laughs> that's crazy wild but all right uh number two on the list uh was something we kind of talked about i mentioned it in a quick check at one point this year uh the free britney mm. movement that was number two uh -huh. on the list um it's obviously been going on for a while uh this hashtag and this movement but it really kind of came to surface i think with the uh, documentary Framing Britney Spears, I think it came out in February. Um, that's when I first kind of saw it and kind of really learned about uh, conservat conservatorships. Um, this and I Care A Lot, the movie on Netflix, I think mm. we talked about, really kind of opened my eyes to just how crazy and just messed yeah. up the, some of these relationships are. And, you know, at least on the bright side of everything, I believe as of November... Britney's has ended and I think the public support really helped uh kind of because I think a lot of you know people would have not really you know maybe thought too much about it but because of this because of the uproar between uh, all the media um you know news about it I think it kind of helped push this mm. through and maybe has you know opened eyes up for other uh situations for other people to dealing with any any thoughts on uh, on free Britney uh, um, I would just say that it, it, all the a lot of the others are like a moment in time this is one that just like keeps coming back because it was like yeah she it was like people were on her side and then it was like oh she's got a court date and then uh, more details would come out and then it was the documentary and then it was mm -hmm. like another court date and then like the father speaks and then Brittany you know so it's like this ongoing thing that uh I think a lot of people became aware of uh so good for her and that you know that this eventually came to an end but uh yeah it took a long time and i don't think unlike some some of these pop culture stuff where it's like one flash point in time it was like yeah. a ongoing thing multiple yeah. multiple and probably still yeah. ongoing uh who knows but all right so number one we actually have a tie we have a tie for number one I'll start off with the first one here. You can kind of see in our yeah, visual I, yeah, probably I what, it is. what it is. Yeah. The Bernie Sanders inauguration uh, meme. This was, I mean, this one lasted all the way from January yeah. here. Uh, I'm surprised Curb hasn't just done this somehow. Mm. They got like Larry just in this outfit, just sitting somewhere just to get this meme going mm. again. Um, sitting there with his mask, his mittens, <laughs> his those mittens, I think, became like these it was like a local business yeah. and it was like such hot selling that was like the, the business couldn't keep up with the demand yeah. for these men's <laughs> after this meme. Um, but yeah, just like the way he had like his like Manila envelope, like he was going to go do like an errand after the inauguration. Mm. He's just like, yeah, I got to stop at the post office and then get groceries, but I'll do this first. Yep. <laughs> like, whatever. But yeah, any any thoughts on the uh, Bernie Sanders meme? Uh, I mean, people were putting them everywhere. That was the yeah. that was the whole thing. Is I mean, it was it was funny at the time, and then like people put it. I mean, the internet does its thing, yeah. and uh, it lasted for quite a bit. So yeah, it did, and it tied with something that you mentioned as well. Something that was also kind of a thing that lasted quite a bit and kept coming back up, and there was more developments. The GameStop stock mm. short squeeze um, really took off in January again, and it was it, this was 
I believe at the height of this whole stock shorting, it was $500 per share. That's what it was going for at the height of this. 30 times the valuation <sighs> of what it normally is. And it led oh to the the app Robinhood halting the, of, of buying GameStop stock, which resulted in lawsuits of market manipulation. Uh-huh. Um, they later did a whole similar thing with um, AMC Theaters and their yep. stock. And, you know, the whole thing of like to the moon and all this like lingo and just it. John, the, the GameStop short squeeze here. Thoughts? I don't know. It's pretty crazy. I mean, you you on one hand have people doing to to you know stockbrokers and all that stuff what they normally do, and then you have the stockbrokers being like, no, you can't do that, and like yeah. getting upset. We do that. Yeah, like, 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 yeah, I don't know. Like the whole double standard thing it was pretty crazy to see it all all kind of play out, and um, you know, same thing with like Bitcoin. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. It'd be nice to have been there to to ride that wave up to uh, you know a little bit of cash but, to the moon. Know, yeah. Uh, that's, that's what it is now, you know? Yeah. And don't worry. We're going to get plenty of this. Just like Tiger King, there's plenty of projects in development. I think we might have mentioned them. Right now, at least on Wikipedia, if you look, there are five different projects listed that are in development. That's you got a Netflix movie. You have an MGM movie based off of a book, a limited run series, a documentary, and an HBO scripted film. Kyle, you ready for... <laughs> Talking about that every other month next year on the no. podcast. Oh my god, no! But I just love how the one is based on a book. From that, I mean, it all happened in a year. Well, I don't know if it was like a complete like base, like one hundred percent. Let's see, a- adapted it to to whatever they needed. Yeah, like it was something based right. on like stock stuff, and then they kind of made yeah. it off of that. I'm seeing if I can pull up the name of the exact thing here in the moment. I'm working on it, but uh, yeah, huh. Too hard to find right now, but um, but the, the thing of stuff I'll say about out this GameStop stock shorting thing is it was even if you weren't in entertainment or anything, it was affect it was affecting life. Like yeah. the Bernie Sanders meme is just a funny thing that people were doing. This was like affecting financial institutions, like how then like it got in like the government was stepping involved like it was like a and then it thing like got like, into uh, like uh, discussions about like oh what are what are you know what are people allowed to do and stuff like that you know what are yeah. what are stockbrokers allowed to do what are people's allowed to do how is wall street you know screwing over the little guy and people were doing interviews on news channels across you know the media landscape about this thing wild wild stuff but yeah those were our 2021 top three pop culture moments some of my favorites that didn't make the cut uh obviously i mentioned the jeopardy debacle uh i saw the i thought the stuff with taylor swift and the all too well and the short film and the re-release that kind of was a a moment Mm. there and then i'll mention it maybe it's just a dual redundancy thing but the james corden (laughs) viral sidewalk musical thing so ridiculous what the heck any other moments uh stand out to you guys this year that we haven't mentioned any favorites anything i will say the milk crate challenge is pretty dumb but it was it was it was yeah. it was around the all the challenges I, are done you if you tell me oh there's a new challenge i'm like it's dumb whatever it is it's dumb tide pod milk crate yeah. but um john you'll appreciate this there was a write-in for a pop culture moment that was Chris Pratt cast in fill in the blank. <laughs> Happened so frequent. Yeah. Yep. Well, Chris Pratt's cast in something. That's funny. Um, okay. Last thing I'm going to do is just run through some comments that were left on the survey. This is sometimes where it can get really weird <laughs> or fun. Um, I always ask, is there any personal entertainment memories or moments from 2021? I think people also sometimes take that as any personal moments yeah. from 2021. It's mostly entertainment memories, but I'll still uh-huh. read them here. <laughs> Uh, this first one, don't get mad, Kyle, but there was somebody like the WWE Peacock partnership. Dude, like, oh, oh, they're, they're trying to bait no. Kyle. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> no. Um, let's see. There are some people. Some people watch some old stuff this year. Quote: I binge watch all of BoJack Horseman. So although it's not from this year, that stands out. Good choice. And somebody else. I didn't spend a lot of time in 2021 with media from 2021 except for music. Most of my focus was on Mr. Sunshine 2018. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, some people are watching some weird stuff. Yeah. I'm even debating about saying this one oh, on no. the podcast. Oh, geez. 
I might clean it up a little bit. Um, my kitten was chasing his tail, and he whacked his genitalia on the wall and ran away. <laughs> was, that, was that a home movie, or what, what, what was that? What, what? <laughs> that was somebody's uh, personal entertainment memory oh, from 2021. Oh, my God, dude. We need that guy's life uh, rights. We need the clip yeah. to play. It really is what it boils down to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some people were very optimistic and positive. They said, uh, I got my dream job. Uh, somebody who said, Godzilla versus Kong opening to 31 million. That was the moment I knew theaters would be roaring back and prove the naysayers wrong. Such an exciting time in 2021. And then some people were not as optimistic. Wait, does that uh, last person work for the studios? What? <laughs> maybe. I think it, it, it might have been either Godzilla or Kong. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, and then there were some people that, yeah, were not optimistic. Quote, so glad 2021 is almost over, though 2022 will be worse for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what do you, I mean, we we don't know what's next. It just looks like the no. same, the same crap. Every year, every year, uh, 2019, 2020, that's, you always see, uh, 2020 sucked, but guess what? 2021, <laughs> that's my year. Spoiler, it's not. It's not gonna be. <laughs> Same with 2022, 2023. Oh, man. That's it. That's that's the note I want to end on tonight. <sighs> well, that is it for the podcast of 2021. We did it. Those were your favorite movies, television shows, and pop culture moments from the year. And that is it for us for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to be off. We're going to come back in January. But we got some stuff. You know, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Uh whatever podcast player you like, because we got some mini pods coming uh, for the podcast. Next week, our favorite dual redundancy moments from the past year. We'll talk about those. And then the next week, what we're looking forward to in 2022. We'll look, at, we'll, we'll look ahead at the next year and what can either excite us or disappoint us <laughs> come next year at this time. Um, make sure during this time you're following us on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram at Dora Unseen, and of course on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, the blog, DoraUnseen.com, and Twitch. We'll be back uh, the first Tuesday in January, twitch.tv slash DoraUnseen, usually 8 p.m. Eastern. That's normally what we go to. Um, yeah, that is it. That's it for the year, guys. I got to thank you both. Really, truly, I can't do this thing without you. You know, thank you for joining me for the last year of podcasts, for John, for directing all of our Twitch streams, getting the audio up into your, the podcast players. I couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah dude. A great last episode. Yeah, of the year. <laughs> of the year. Of the year? Until next year, I'm David Allen. I'm John Berwick. And I'm Kyle Bridger. And that's all we got for Door Redundancy 2021. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>